Hi guys, welcome to my custom RX 5700 BIOS guide. Now, if you're using Motor Power Tool, you'll notice that every time you update the drivers, you have to reload the Motor Power Tool, and that can be annoying for some, especially if you've got the uh, you flashed an XT BIOS and you found that whenever you update the drivers, it also resets your stable settings that you've set up in uh, in Radeon settings and pretty much can cause instability as soon as you've done the flash so to avoid all that it's easiest to just modify the custom bio uh, a custom BIOS based off your card so you've, you've pulled it straight off your graphics card then you're just unlocking the megahertz and power limit that, that you'd normally want to unlock for overclocking so as you can see here 50, you can set it all the way up to 50% and I can set my clock speed all the way up to 2100 megahertz. So that's what most people are aiming for when you flash the XT BIOS or you use the more power tool. You don't necessarily want your card running at XT clocks being a non-XT card with a slightly weaker cooler and you know obviously not everyone's going to be stable at those those higher clock speeds and voltages especially if you're running a case that does not have really good airflow you could find that you're unstable even at desktop. So to avoid all that, it's better to just do a custom BIOS, then you don't have to worry about loading the more power tables every single time. And yeah, it's just generally better than the other options. And this is the actual guide in text on Igor's lab. It was done at March 2020, but I missed it. And I'm sure a lot of other people might have missed it too. So for anyone that has already done you know, a bit of work with BIOS flashing or more power tool, you'll probably be able to pick off on this very easily, or you can just follow the text guide. For anyone that's got a new RX 5700 that hasn't hasn't done much tweaking, so you haven't got any stable like settings that you've you've already, you know, you've already figured out by yourself. Uh, this guide will let you at least have that overclocking headroom, and you know if you don't if you don't end up using the overclocking headroom, it, it's not going to hurt anything because your card's still basically running stock. Uh, for all other accounts and one other issue that can be caused by doing the BIOS flash is that yeah it does make your card show up as a XT and you know games and, and GPU-Z even will show an XT and when you load up drivers uh, I think the, the drivers you have installed at the time of the flash are fine but when you go to do manual installs like or if you wipe your system and you want to do another you want to install a driver manually it'll actually need the XT drivers which is kind of frustrating so yeah this this bypasses all that and you can see here my card's still showing as a 5700, but I've got the I've got the overclocking options unlocked as I as I just showed you. So anyway, um, because this guide is can be a bit overwhelming for the newer people, that's why I'm doing this video. And you can see the disclaimer. It's basically saying you can brick your card if if your system even for separate reasons like if your system is brand new, newly built, and you haven't stability tested, which I recommend you do at least a light stability test. Um, it's not resource heavy to flash the BIOS and it is really quick But on the off chance that you happen to get a crash or a lockup or something in the middle of a BIOS flash That's what can break your card, especially if you don't have a dual BIOS switch um, You can also Unbrick a bricked BIOS if you've got a dual BIOS switch by switching it back to the bricked BIOS while the system is running and In that way you can kind of recover your, your dual BIOS But anyway, let's just get straight to it now so you can, you, it, you know, it's probably good to read this. I'll link it in the description and everything below so that you can you can download everything. But all you really need to do is go to download and instructions, and down at the bottom here, there's all the files you need. Download more power tool and Red BIOS editor. These are installations, so you're going to have to install them on your system. There might be a warning for Red BIOS, but Ego's Lab is a pretty reputable site, and I've done it myself with you know nothing weird happened on my system yet and then you also want for the RX 5700 you could do this on an XT if you have some special custom setting you need but for the most part this this guides just for that 5700 and as you can see here there's other cards it works on but the more power tool as far as I know has support I don't know if it has support for all models but the RX 5700 is what this guide's based on so you want just mirror one or two for the, the flash tool and that's a zip file and make sure you unzip that to your C drive. 
so you want to undip it to like C drive flash, something really simple because you're going to be using command line and command line is much easier in the root directory. So aside from that, you've got everything installed. Then you want you also want GPU Z. So if you don't know what that is, you can just Google uh, GPU Z. It should come up. Tech Power Up download, and you know the version doesn't matter too much. The latest is good. I'm I'm still on 2.29. And the important part here is you want to start the program, run it, and save to file. So just like that, and it'll come up default for my RX 5700. It wants to save it as Navi 10. So that's the ROM there. That is my stock BIOS straight off the GPU. So after you've done that, you'll go into more power tool. So for, for you guys familiar with this, you probably already have your own profiles. You won't be using write SPPT or delete. You just need to load your profile and well, you don't even really need to load it. As long as you know which profile you want integrated into your BIOS, that's all that matters. But for those of you that don't know how to use it, I'm just going to load up my my custom power table now and you can see here there's features I if you don't know what you're doing just leave everything stock uh, there's a curve feature that can help you help uh, you can actually go on this guide that it describes how to adjust it's to do with the voltage curve and it, and correcting it because when you unlock higher voltages the the curve actually gets thrown off in the middle range a little bit so you can end up with higher voltage at the, the curve I'm talking about is here this curve will get thrown off if you have a high voltage set. So if you're using, if you if you're really extreme overclock and going to 1.2, 1.3, this middle voltage will actually be inflated without adjusting the curve. And there's a guide on it down here, all about the curve editor and default values. So you can read into that if you want to mess with it. Uh, for this guide, I'm just going to recommend you leave that alone because we're not going to be unlocking extreme voltages. We're just doing a little bit of a, a you know. The megahertz unlock and the power limit really so leave everything stock if you've got a custom cooler you can look into adjusting the fan values too because uh, the, the fan readings will be thrown off by a custom fan so if you're running like an aftermarket all-in-one cooler that you've installed yourself your fan is not going to match the bios fan so you can modify it like for example stock bios of the sapphire pulse rx5700 is actually 3000 rpm my Arctic Extreme IV fan's got to 2000 RPM, so I've lowered that so that I get more accurate readings. It still won't give you super accurate readings, but it helps. And otherwise, you can leave everything else alone. It's just under overdrive limits, which is your overclocking limits, you just want to increase that to 2100 megahertz and increase the power limit to 50. Now, this power limit minimum is actually all in the negative, so that value means negative 50, so don't get thrown off by that. And you can also, there's more fan settings that you can adjust for, to help with the readings. So after you've done that, so you've changed these two values, that's the main thing you want to do. That's your. That's basically what the XT BIOS flash is, is, is aimed at, to get, to get that extra headroom. Then you just want to save it and name it, you know, custom MPT or whatever you want. And exit. Like So that's basically it. That's, that's the file that you need that's got the settings you want. So after you've done that, you then launch Red BIOS Editor, load, and load your stock ROM. So this is the one that we took off GPU Z, and it'll automatically have, you know, everything you need. It's got all the information. You can change the boot message. So if, if you've got your um, command line prompt, not command line. I think it's command line actually. When you boot system, if you've got your text showing up, you know, a little bit of text that quickly pops up and says some stuff, tells you your, you know, your SSD and everything installed. I'm pretty sure you can modify this and it'll it'll show a different boot message. So you could put in anything you want here. Uh, you could just put RX 700. But anyway, I'll, I'm just going to leave that default because I actually like how it how it how it is showing that the proper device ID, you know, information. And here's the MPT file that we created. That you modified so custom MPT. It'll load up like that. I recommend not changing anything unless you really know what you're doing because you know this is like RAM overclocking timings of your GPU so you can brick your GPU messing with these too much. If you know what you're doing then yeah by all means go ahead and after you've done that you, you're pretty sure the MPT that you used is rock stable or well if you if, if it's an overclocked MPT uh, if it's just if all you're doing is unlocking like I've shown you then it, it's safe there's no, nothing to worry about we didn't change any of the default clock speeds and then click save. 
after you've done it. So that's your. This is going to be your red BIOS. So you want to save that into that same flash folder where we unzipped the BIOS flash program. So rbe.rom is what I named mine. Really simple. And after you've saved that, exit out. And if I can remember what I'm doing here, start, type cmd, run as administrator, and you can pretty much just enter the lines on the last page of this guide. But if you're kind of stuck, you want to change the directory first. So cd and then c drive forward slash flash. That's why we named it simple. And you can see I'm in c drive flash now. And that's when you do am dvb flash forward slash, uh, slash unlock rom zero. And it'll come up rom unlocked. And then after you've done that, you type am dvb flash slash f space slash p zero rbe dot rom and then you press enter and it'll basically do this it takes less than a minute or it took less than a minute on my system and then you restart and once you've done that you'll be able to go in here you'll have your increased maximums all the way up to 2100 and your fan speed will be changed if you adjusted that and you'll have increased power limit and that'll be saved onto your gpu so the win driver updates no more loading of the power tool so, you know, that's that's the biggest thing for me. I was actually just using the power tool for the past few months and when I realized there was a there was a way to flash a custom BIOS and bypass all that, then yeah, I went straight for it. It does look a bit overwhelming though. That's that's the main reason why I thought, oh, I should do this video because there probably are people out there on XT biases that are either their XT BIOS isn't completely stable or they don't like the fact that their their GPU is needing XT drivers which might have some issue with the CU cores. Because uh, you know the XT has extra cores, right? So the fact that there's two different drivers you can download and you have to s specifically select the XT variant tells me that there are driver differences between the two. Otherwise, it would just be the exact same drivers that auto detect, right? So I was using the XT. I had a BIOS XT flash before, and I was using that, and it bugged the, the heck out of me. And it also annoyed me that GPU Z and I can't remember the couple of the games were actually detecting an XT. And since my card was an XT, it was also misleading for benchmark videos and stuff. People are saying, like, why does it say XT? And really, it's just a flash non-XT. So this will get rid of all that. And there are a few other things you can do, but you want to read up on what you're doing. Like, for example, you can disable zero RPM. You can read through this guide. And it'll give you, you know, a bit more of a description. Uh, you can also look up guides on Eagles Labs for more power tools specifically, because that's the settings that we're dealing with. So if you want to turn off zero RPM, you don't like the fan turning off completely and you always want it at like a minimum but not off, you can turn off the zero RPM feature. I'm pretty sure there's a driver level for in here where you can turn off zero RPM if your GPU supports it. And you can also disable fan acoustic RPM, for example, which, which can interfere with the fan speed based on noise and it tries to keep the fan speed down if it's too noisy. Uh, I had that. I had mine turned off, but otherwise you can leave it all default. You're just really wanting to unlock stuff, so that's that's the main thing. And then once you've unlocked it, you you're you're better off doing this for for your own custom tuning. Is when you find, for example, you for light gaming, you might want to make a profile for when you're playing really easy MOBA games and things like that. This is my undervolt profile here, which is basically stock, but with a little less core voltage. Once you've set your profile and set like a nice fan curve save profile and just have it have different profiles with the information that you need so if there's a really intensive game or you know not that intensive but i could use a few more mps i might run the 1900 megahertz core and for a really intensive game or a benchmark where i'm trying to squeeze every last bit of performance out i'll have the 2000 1850 mem or if that proves to be unstable because the mem can be pretty touchy like some games will be completely fine with overclocked memory and you'll gain get a performance increase and some certain benchmarks or games will literally just crash if the MEMS touch too much. So then I've got the 1750 for that. So that's just me. Um, but obviously, this is just to give you a rough idea of, of how to do it on your own. And then you can save it all and you can actually copy all these profiles and put them in a backup. Like I showed over here, I've got Watman backup profiles. That's just in case anything weird goes wrong where you, you end up wiping all your AMD files. So that I've had that happen before. I, I think I did a big update and then my profiles got erased. So I had a backup that was good. But yeah, other than that, you can save that and then you can just switch between them at will. Uh, not save. 
So if I, you know, if I want to do the 2018-50, I can just switch to it, although I shouldn't do it while recording. Um, and then I can switch back. And you can also do this on a game basis. This is what it's also really handy for. If you're playing a particular game, that game will actually come up in your drivers while you're playing. So just as an example, say I'm playing, I don't know which one. I don't think I ran run an overclock on any of these at the moment. But okay, let's just say I'm playing Metro Exodus. You can actually set a per game profile that'll load the moment you start that particular game. So as you can see, it's got tune game performance. This is for Metro Exodus game performance under tuning. See how Metro Exodus came up? So yeah, I actually I do have a few profiles. So then you can have your you can have it automatically load your profiles, but you're still using from that base set that you've already pre-configured and tested. So for this game, I've got it at stock. So I, I just, yeah, this isn't even necessary. Um, and Escape from Tarkov, I'm also running stock. Path of Exile, am I running stock? Yeah, I am. Hunt Showdown, I might have had, no. <laughs> but, you know, you get the idea. If you want to run an overclock, you can load it on your per I think it wasn't working in one of the early revisions when they implemented this, but... It, it is working now so you can set it so for, for for one particular game you can have it load up this profile for example and that'll be you know I'm not, I'm not running it now if I go to let's see let's make sure if I go to normal global tuning which is what I'm doing at the desktop now see it's still at 1750 but if I go to hunt it'll still show me what I just set the 1900 profile so you can kind of you know you can have your own profiles for separate games and that's pretty handy and then if you get sick of it or you don't want to use it, you can just delete profile. But you won't act because you're doing it for the game, you won't actually be losing your your normal overclock. As you can see here. So it'll just revert to whatever you're running to in global. So that's something to be aware of. But anyway, for the most part I've already accomplished what I wanted, which is showing people how to make a custom RX 5700 or basically unlock your RX 5700 without using an XT BIOS. So I hope that helps guys and see you in the next one.